Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you look back uh, two years ago, maybe a year ago, uh, five years ago, I'm sure as a Christian, you will be able to determine how far the Lord has brought you in terms of his orchestration. Amen? Amen. In terms of his orchestration, we can go a bit further back, uh, even in our childhood, how the Lord has used circumstances to shape us. And so based on that journey, our perspective, our personal journeys, uh, I want to come to you with this message, and it's a message of encouragement. I pray it is a message of encouragement and a, prosper, a proper perspective as to you as a Christian and the factor of God in your life. In other words, I've entitled this morning's message, God is working for you. God is working for you. Every now and then, some of us will be invited to a surprise party, and at times, there are real surprises. And what makes it, what often makes it a surprise is how the people that are surprised, you see, you look at them and they think, how did that happen? I thought I was, I was aware of what was going on. How did I miss this? How did they manage to get the music and the, and the food? And the, how did they manage to invite all these people without my knowledge? Someone was working behind the scenes. <laughs> Amen? A week ago, some of us were sitting here. Uh, I don't think it was a Sunday. It was during the week or the weekend. And we're talking about angelic appearances. And I talk about how in my own life, how I've seen angels of God operating in my life without me being even aware until they finish their work. And I think, wow, this must be God. So you have your stories, I have my stories. And, and, and if you don't, perhaps this message will open your eyes and my eyes further to affirm the fact that God is always, someone say always. always. God is always. You are where you are now not because of your own orchestration as a child of God. And as much as the enemy is also working behind the scenes, the one who created the universe, the creator and the sustainer of the universe is also working behind the scenes. And it has, um, it has you know, how they act. In the olden times, I don't know about now, if now, I can't remember the last time I went to a, a drama theater to watch a play. But in the olden times, they would have people behind the scenes whispering things to them, telling them what to say and what not to say. God is working behind the scenes. And as I, as, I, as I announce my topic and the subject that we might need at least two Sundays to cover, I believe that God is beginning to open your eyes and remind you how you ended up here. A lot of us have come from other countries. How you ended up here, how you ended up in that relationship or came out of it, how you ended up in that job, how you ended up even where you are staying and what God has taken you out of and where he's also leading you. God is working for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to dwell on Exodus chapter 14. We're going to see how God is going to operate behind the scenes. Even to the point that the enemies of the children of Israel in the end said, let's get away from here. God is fighting for them. Yeah. <laughs> and people are watching you. They see you. Sometimes God blesses us so much that we don't even see what God is doing. It takes the unbelieving world, or it takes people around us to say, ah, in 2008, you probably heard me say this before, in 2008, the Lord was blessing me so much. It took someone who had just left the building going to teach Sunday school to say, wow, pastor, God has really blessed you this year. I said, really? I was so busy. The, numbers of, the number of people that were coming in with all the responsibilities, I, I was worn out that I couldn't even see. I said, how has God blessed me? <laughs> I remember, not too far from here, standing in front of a house. I said, how has God blessed me? He said, wow, 
this year you've moved into a new house. A four bedroom, two reception house. I said, what else? He said, God has given you a brand new car. I said, what else? And she kept saying. I'm thinking, whoa, Cornelius, wake up. And as I look back, I'll probably share some things with you personally. The angelic manifestation and operation. And God doesn't always act dramatically, but he's there. He is with you. He is for you. And the reason why I didn't use God is fighting for you is that it's more than a fight. And so I prefer to use God is working for you. It's working for you. My God is not always fighting. He, you know, he, yes, of course he's fighting. If he hadn't, you know, the victory had already been won anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But he's working. He's orchestrating. There's no military force that is sharper and smarter than the way my God works. Hallelujah. There's no intelligence that is better and sharper than the way God works. Another thing I want to throw in whilst we are talking about it is as, as we journey through Exodus, one of the things that has caused me to fear most is how repeatedly the word of God says, and God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. That's scary. When we go back to Genesis, often when we came to the story of Joseph, it was often said that, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph, and God was with Joseph. We come to Exodus, and we keep hearing, and God had it. And even in this chapter, as God is about to show Pharaoh who he is, it, even at that point, he said, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. And why should I say this? As I was, I've been meditating and preparing this message, I feel someone, someone need to hear this. Number one, last night, I heard God clearly saying to me, say to some, that person, and, he, and I, felt, I felt God was saying, you are so distraught. You are so discouraged that instead of coming into the building, you are watching this message. And God will have me say to you, he is working for you. Amen. You are watching me right now. And the word of God on my heart for you is that he's working. You are so discouraged. You've given up. And God is saying he loves you and he's working for you. Don't throw in the towel. He's working for you. And, you, and that message can, might be for some people right here in the building or someone that might. And, and, and God has come to assure you. So let's come to Exodus 14. Exodus 14. I was going to read just a few verses. But let me, you know, often I, as a preacher and a teacher, you trust that people will read this and all that. But I've learned for a long time that uh, sometimes it's good whilst we are together to go through the scriptures and then begin to dissect it. So let's come. And this time I'm using the new uh, King James Version instead of the New Living Translation that I often use. Exodus 14. I was going to read from verse 10, but let me read from verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and come before Pi Haharoth, between Migdol and the sea. Remember that they've been delivered from the land of Egypt, heading towards the promised land, or the land where God said he's taking them. Not through a shorter journey, but a long, uh, uh, not through a shorter route, but a longer route. Opposite Baal Zephon, you shall come before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say uh, um, of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Very scary thing. If you are in that position where you are so angry, you are bitter, and you are not letting go. God is saying, let go and let God. Hallelujah. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them. Remember that God has really demonstrated his power, and Pharaoh and his people say, come on, get out of here. Otherwise, you're all going to die. And now Pharaoh is changing his mind. And I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army. I was expecting amen there. That the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. 
Verse 5. Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled. And they're the same people that let them go. <laughs> and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. We have let Israel go from serving us. So, we made, so he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. Also he took 600 choice chariots. And all, all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord had in the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Can you, can you hear that being repeated? And he pursued the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with boldness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So the Egyptians pursued them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them, camping by the sea beside Pihaharoth, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew near, watch this. When Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes. Be very careful what you lift your eyes to see. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Verse 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you when? Today, today, today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you, <laughs> hallelujah, you shall see again no more forever. Verse 14. Is where my title is coming from. Verse 14, let's read that together. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. That's the word for someone here today. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the middle of the sea. That doesn't often happen. Dry land in the middle of the sea. They don't match together. Hallelujah. Amen. It's something that my, only my God can accomplish. Amen. And he accomplished it for you and for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he, I indeed will harden the heart of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. So I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 19. Listen, I've mentioned angels, and they, they play a huge role in our lives. Hallelujah. Hmm. I pray that God will open our eyes. God will open your eyes to see some of the things that are going on around you. Sometimes it will scare you to, to really, you, you'll be afraid. It, just, it shows that he loves you 
and he cares for you. That's all. 19. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. You don't know who is before you and who is behind you. So it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. This, thus it was, a cloud and darkness to, to the one, and it gave light by night to the other, so that the one did not come near the other all that night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into a dry land. And the waters were divided, so the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians, and he took off their chariot wheels. Hallelujah. He took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the, fa- from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it, so the Lord overthrew, overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. Not so much as one of them remained. Is anyone listening to me? Not one of them. Not one of them. Verse 29. The children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left hand. Verse 30. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus, Israel saw the great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses, what are you going through? What have you been going through? And I can see someone, the enemy is bombarding you. The enemy is marching behind you. And anytime you turn around, you think about that sickness, you think about that job, you think about that relationship, and you are crying out. Can I say something to you? One of the key truths of this message is that God is working for you, not because of you. God is working for you for his name's sake. (laughs) That his name will be glorified. That when you have acquired, when you have received that healing, when you have received that job, when you have received that which is bending you, all the glory will go to his precious holy name. He said, I will gain glory over Pharaoh. Yes, that person or that circumstances has been your enemy. You see that as your enemy, but your enemy is God's enemy. Hallelujah. And God will gain glory over your enemy. How a mere man 
can set himself up as the enemy of God. And you and I will always have enemies. But don't focus so much on your enemies. Focus on the one who conquers your enemy. Hallelujah. And always remember your testimonies. Has God done anything for you before? Always remember that. We will see over here how, how short memory plagued the children of Israel. We're going to see right here. Allow me to pick it up from verse 10. Verse 10 says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. What has been marching after you? What has been marching after you? You wake up in the middle of the night and that's on your mind. You go to work, that's on your mind. The slightest, the shortest time that you could just enjoy life, that just, just comes to flash in your mind. And you and I will say, for how long, oh God? For how long? For how long? And that, that army, that Pharaoh and his army and his chariots and all that, they are marching after you. One of these days, they are going to drown. You see their bodies by the seashore. Why? The Lord is going to bring back the waters to swallow them up in the name of Jesus Christ. The Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. All of us have our fears. All of us have our fears and our phobias. But that should not stop us from standing and being still as we are about to know. So they were very afraid. Not afraid, but very afraid. And the children of Israel cried to the Lord. Later on, they are going to criticize Moses. Now, as part of my notes, this is what I've, <laughs> this is what I've written down. Be very careful what comes out of your mouth when you're under pressure. Hallelujah. When things are not going right and you've forgotten this message, you have long forgotten, <laughs> just be very, very careful. Yes, the circumstances were so clear. They had left Egypt under, what, 450 years of slave, being slaves. They are about to go, and their slave masters are saying, Ah, now our firstborn sons have died and male uh, uh, animals have died, and why have we? They are the same people that threw them out. Folks, maybe you are listening to me, and there have been a slave master in your, in your life. Maybe a family member, a boss, or, or a husband or wife, and, and, and they don't want you to be free. Maybe they've told you, why are you always happy? Don't bring this Christ in my home, that sort of thing. Stand firm. Stand firm. Don't fight. I'm going to show you that, listen, often we feel that we can conquer by fighting. Let God fight for you. Amen. We make a mess. You and I make a mess when we fight ourselves. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's, it's so cool when God fights for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so they lifted up their voices and they cried to the Lord, and I'm glad they did. Verse 11, then they said to Moses, this is where... <laughs> Uh, 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 criticism can see. Because there were no, is it because there were no graves in Egypt? That's why you brought us here on the desert to, for us to die. And at times, uh, and often, they will bring their children in. <laughs> you know, to make the emotion so effective. To kill us and our children. <laughs> they didn't say that over here. Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? The same people that were crying out for years. For years they were crying out for freedom. And God said, God sent Moses by saying that I have heard their cry. <laughs> and now look at the way they are talking. Be very careful what you say when you are under pressure. Even in good times and in bad times, be very careful your words. Life and death are in the power of our tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Be very, very careful. Now, the, real, the reality is that fear can make us behave in ways that we don't intend to. Amen? I have seen arrogant people. You're sitting with them on that plane, and the way they talk. 
Now let that plane go into turbulence. <laughs> Have you noticed that? They go quiet. And only God knows what is going through their minds. Fear makers behave in funny ways. And so over here they are reacting to their fear. Now there is Pharaoh, that scary guy. Among the, fro the frogs and the ants and the darkness to the point that their firstborn male had died. And now he's coming after marching with his chariots and horsemen after us. Moses, why have you done this to us? Come to verse 12. Quickly, we could just spend a bit more time there, but because of time, let's move on. Verse 12. Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Now, when you're under pressure, even some of the things you say can be lies. Because we don't often hear them saying that leave us alone. <laughs> they just wanted to make sure that who has sent you? And, 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 and Moses assured them that it's the Lord who has sent them. And God proved his power with Moses and Aaron again and again when they appeared in the palace of Pharaoh. And now they are they are coming up with it. Didn't we tell you to leave us alone? Under fear and under pressure, we can be unrealistic. You have to find the right person, the right people to talk to when you are going through distress. Amen? It's not everybody you talk to. When you are going down, there are people who will push you further down. When you are going down, you need people that will say, I'm standing with you. I don't know how we're going to get through this, but the God we serve will bring us through this. Hallelujah. I remember there was a, a, German, a German missionary in Ghana. At the time, Reynard Bonke started bringing his open-air crusades to Ghana. And I, I, I was in this meeting. It was a leadership meeting. Uh, I think they were Presbyterian missionaries. And I remember, no, 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 they were not. They were charismatic Pentecostal missionaries. Not that there, there aren't Presbyterian, uh, charismatics or Pentecostals in the Presbyterian church. There are all these denominations of their Pentecostal uh, um, group in them. But this woman, I remember her sharing this, and she was talking about how we got to adopt boldness and trust our God when the going gets tough. And she said her husband has been hit with typhoid fever. And she remembered that um, had, had the Lord not come through, her husband would have died. So, in order to have a bit of support, I'm talking about finding the right people to agree with you, to pray with you, to stand with you, that your faith will be uh, uh, um, confirmed and that your faith will be rewarded. So this woman said, as her husband, she felt that her husband was just slipping away. She called for the, uh, a fellow German missionary. And she said when this man came to agree with her to pray for her husband, this was the prayer. And she, she, she said, clearly, she said, this man that she, she thought was their friend came in with, her, with his dog collar, with his Bible tucked under his arm. And this was his prayer. Dear Lord, if my brother's time has come, would you take him peaceful? Let him not suffer anymore. And this woman wasn't slim. I can tell you that. I, I remember her clearly. And she said, look at me. She said, I used my body to push him away. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to bury my husband in, in Ghana. Amen? Listen, when you are, your back is to the wall, you can say all sorts of things. You can behave in certain ways. But I thank God for her faith that made her push this man away and say that her husband is not dying. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is working for you. God is working for you, my dear friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this not a word that we told you in Egypt? Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Think about that. Hmm. Now, the point that I have made under this verse, verse 12 is that pessimism and sarcasm is very dangerous and can affect our relationship with God and with other people. Pessimism. By nature, we can be the glass is half empty or the glass is half full people. Which one are you? At times, you've got to have to talk to yourself 
That I, I, everything around you seems to be going down, but you believe in Yahweh. You believe in God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let's quickly come on to verse number 13. Glory be to God. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. <laughs> I brought a message on overcoming our fears. And there are some people, when they say to them, do not be afraid, they say, if I'm not going to be afraid, what, um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Believe in God. Trust him. And that's why at the beginning I said to you that remember your testimonies. In fact, it's a good exercise if we can write down our testimonies. Amen? Amen. If we can write it down. In order to go back, have a journal, and put down your testimonies. Do not be afraid, he said to them. Then the next thing he said, I could just imagine some of these, some of these people going, stand still. Come on, God. Let's move on. <laughs> Amen? Stand still. Some people don't know how to stand still, though. The word of God, I say, be still and know that I'm God. Sometimes it washes over people. Be still. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm charismatic. I don't know how to be still. God will have me say to you, be still. You know how the young people say it? Chill. Cool. We can be so busy looking for answers. Wanting God to come through quick and God's timing. Isn't it Jesus? Wasn't it Jesus the friend of Lazarus? And when he got that text message, when he got that message that his friend, that email came, your friend is dying, he took his time. That can be so annoying when you're looking for an answer. When you are desperate. And we all can be very desperate. In fact, some of us, by disposition, we are calm. Some people are, oh, come on, let's have an answer. And I, I, can, I, I have irritated people in this church. When they are looking for answers. And this pastor is so laid back. Cool. Because I know my God. Who has never failed me. Amen? Amen? He has never failed you. I love that old song. Never failed me yet. Never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Never failed me yet. He's never seen the righteous forsaken. And so Moses. Where is this thing about standstill? They are marching. We just read. They are marching behind us. If we stand so, they're going to catch up and they are going to finish us. So don't tell me to stand so. That's a human response. And humanly speaking, it's understandable. My, but my God doesn't go about human rationale. Hallelujah. Faith overrides human rationale. Faith said that God can create a desert in the middle of the sea. Is anyone listening to me? You do not qualify for that job. You are out of the scene. Was not David, the youngest among the children, the sons of Jesse. But Samuel said, we will not sit down until he comes home. Amen? The God who changes the unchangeable. Who makes the impossibility possible? The same God. The same God. He's the one that you put your faith in. He says, sans cell. And see, someone say see. see. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Stand still. That's not an easy thing, folks. I just want to keep marching. Moses, let me march. Let me go forward. But you see, when God says go forward, go forward. Last week we read that Jesus said, go, you guys go. And while they were going, there was a storm, there was a disturbance. And before they knew it, he was there. He had never left them. He, he knew all that was going on. And my God, who is working for you, he knows what is going on. Yes, he wants us to tell him. He wants us to pray. And prayer is powerful. Prayer simply means that I am totally dependent on you. How many of you, having young ones around you, will often ignore them? Every now and then we will hear uh, a parent or a carer who has abandoned their little ones this week who we, we have been saddened by the little one who was abandoned after being adopted. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about the one whose love you and I will never be able to comprehend. Yes? 
We have our understanding. We will study. We will call some love, agape, his love, agape, filio, and eros, and all that. Let's study it all, but we will never, our human psyche will never be able to know the height, the depth, the width of the love of God. We are limited in our understanding and in our vocabulary when it comes to the love of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so he's saying here, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which you accomplished for you. Someone say, for me. For you, for you, for you. I want you to imagine that impossible situation. It has been going on for far too long. And God is saying he's, a, he's going to accomplish for you today. The next sentence is a sentence, part of this verse that I can dwell on for weeks. For the Egyptians whom you see today, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more. Now, that would have been enough. Amen? If the writer of the book of Exodus, if he had left it there, that would have been enough. But he added a word there. What word? Forever. (laughs) Amen? Amen. You shall see again no more forever. Let me finish with this. The Lord will fight for you. You shall hold your peace. Well, how does that happen? Folks, it's a man called Kevin Zadiah. He has had a visitation to heaven. You, you, you find his video on Sid Roth's channel. And Kevin Zadiah had gone to a conference um, uh, in Virginia, I think it is, or wherever Pentagon is. And so he, he stays in a hotel, and the hotel was overseen. Um, the American institution of the Pentagon. And he said as he entered into his hotel room, he's about to close the door, but the door automatically shuts behind him. And he turned around, and there were angels in his room. I don't know about you, but that doesn't surprise me at all. I want you to be mindful of God's presence around you at all times. Learn to expect the manifestation of the present, when you are home even, when you are driving, at times you and I need to turn that music off and just enjoy the presence of God. We are bombarded because we are, we are blessed with gadgets and all that. We tend to focus on them at times you and I. And so Kevin Zadiah, turn around, they, these guys were there. And initially, he, our human reaction is that we panic. And they say, Kevin, we come to see you. Because you get it. You understand us. You, you, you understand us. And so they have a conversation with him. And he was all, just as Peter, was all to the point that he wanted to build three structures on the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, Kevin Zadaya, despite the fact that he had a heavenly visitation and all the rest of it, he, he, he was a bit surprised. And they had a conversation. And he said to him, shall we go to the canteen and have a meal? They said, no. I'm talking about God working for you guys. Amen? Amen? Thank God for the MI5 and the MI6 and all our uh, uh, um, defense and law enforcement agencies. But there is a defense agency above that is watching over us. You, you, you. Yes, it's good for us to think nationally. It's good for us to think community-wise. It's good for us to think uh, 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 church-wide even. I know there are angels here, right here, right now. Let me, let me put this through before we go on. There was a time I was looking at something to do with the church. Here, this church. And whatever was going on as I looked at it, I thought, this must be the presence of angels. This story, I, I really need to find evidence, written evidence about this. Pastor Perez, you might have it. I understand that years ago in this church, there was a minister that was preaching, preaching his heart out. But um, I think it might have been an evening service. 
as we, we used to have. But the congregation, the congregation's attention, which seems as if they were focusing on the preacher's message, the congregation's attention was on the wall. <laughs> and the man of God thought, wow, they are so attentive. Later on, he was told that there was an appearance of a heavenly being on the wall. Amen? Amen. Marge Morgan, when Marge passed away, a woman that served God, this is the only church she probably knew, 55 years in this church, I was aware, I got Pastor Derek to conduct her funeral for me. Marge says this, <laughs> this to me. She said once she attended, this is many, many years ago, she attended a house group. And she said as she put her handbag down, the presence of God was in this person's house. And there was a good number of them, about 10, 12 of them. And she says, she knelt down, and, and they, there was a spontaneous atmosphere. The place was charged, and everyone was praying. Everyone was praying. And she said, before she knew it, the, the, the host was clapping their hand and saying, brothers and sisters, it's 3 a.m., shall we go home? Then she talked about, folks, may God give us a visitation again. Whether it's as dramatic or tangible as I'm talking about or not, I know he's here. She talks about the minor hall, the old minor hall in the building that we brought down. She said, again, there was a prayer meeting there. And she said, as they went in, you are just invited into this presence of God. That it made time to become nothing. Often we go to a meeting and we're checking our time. Even when we check it last minute, we're checking again. He said, they were just there soaking in the sweetness of the presence of God. And so coming back to Kevin Zadiah, Kevin said, as he said to the angels, he counts them as six. Amazing. He said, he said, guys, shall we go to the canteen? He said, no, no, no. We better get to our job. We have to get back to our job. And they pointed to the Pentagon. And they smiled and said, the people that are working there, in fact, I have a friend who works there as a clinical um, uh, um, auditor, um, forensic auditor. He said, the people that work here, and that is a military, big-time intelligence place, if you, if you know a bit about the Pentagon. He said, the people that work here, they think that they are in charge, but we are in charge. Amen. God is in charge of your life. Amen. When you travel, when you apply for that job, when you wake up and there's a burden on your heart, he knows it all. Amen. What he wants you to do is for us to think with him, just as the angel said to Kevin Zadiah, they said, you get it. You understand us. The same God that fought for the children of Israel, that same God is for you and not against you. Amen. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You shall hold your peace. Hold your peace, oh. We fret too much. We worry too much. We talk too much, just as Anthony said last Sunday. We are all over the place. Hold your peace. Why? Because the Lord is fighting for you. We'll pick it up next Sunday. But I want you, I want you to just... Get this assignment from today as you leave this building. Begin to log, just in your mind, you don't have to write it down. See how God is going to work for you. When, when you turn, some of you at the airport, people are going to favor you. Doors are going to be open for you. When there's an impossibility, someone comes in and says, let them go. Bring me your papers and let me help you. Angelic orchestration. Father, let it come upon your people. I want someone to raise their hands. To acknowledge the working of the Lord in our lives. Amen. Father, you see the hands that are lifted right now, right here. Anoint these hands, O oh God. Let the oil of God come upon God's children right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Would you like to stand? God is working for you. In your going out. And in your coming in, Pharaoh might be walk, marching behind you. His horsemen and his army might be watching. Ignore them. Just focus on your father who is what? Working and fighting for you. 
He is orchestrating. For, that, for the wrong person to come into your life, he will remove them and bring in the right person in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave that boss who has been tormenting your life. Leave them in the hands of God, for God is fighting for you in the name of Jesus. Leave that friend who has been making life hard for you. Leave them in the hands of God. Let God anoint your hands for battle. He's giving you victory again and again. He will fight for you. He's fighting for you. He's working for you. Father, anoint the hands that are lifted. To the point that the people that we will greet, those who will seek to even shake our hands, that the anointing upon our hands will be a blessing to them. Healing, deliverance, salvation. Let the salvation that you're going to rush for us not be beneficiary to us, but beneficiary not just for us, but for others as well. We leave this place, O oh God, knowing that you are for us. And if you are for us, then who can be against us? And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and always. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.